Hello and welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Fried. Welcome to the new J Train Podcast. Coming live from Feather Nation Studios. We're here every Monday with your emails, your stories, your questions, your luxury lounge issues. Send them in. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. If we do a segment here, all you have to do is title your email, the segment name, and you can be a part of that segment on the next episode. So if you hear us talk about Am I Crazy Dog? Send in your Am I Crazy Dog to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Luxury Lounge. Send in your Luxury Lounge complaint. If In the Luxury Lounge, if, you don't, if you're new here, you can complain about anything. We'll go with you. We will talk it out with you. We will agree with you. It's a safe space to complain about anything you'd like. If you have a mailbag question, tell the mailbag. Ask your question. You'll get people to discuss your issues. I know. You'd be like, why would I send it here? Eh, well, your friends lie to you. <laughs> That's why. They're nice to you. They want to be around you. Mm-hmm. They want to uh, uh, like you know be able to eat dinner with you. They they don't want to lose you. They need the connection of other humans. So they're gonna be soft with you. Not here, hard boys. Okay, that's what they call we, us. That's what they call us, the hard boys. We will be hard the whole time we answer your email. Okay. J Train. I'm always hard. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Stone is here. Very excited. He has a special out right now on YouTube. The link to the special is in the bio of this episode on, on podcast apps and YouTube. Nobody presents Greg Stone. Greg, thank you for coming on. Oh, come on. Just love being here. Watch the special. Hilarious. So funny. Taped to the Comedy Cellar. Everyone, full full J Train stamp of approval. Go watch it now. Make it a night. Put it on your TV. The response so far? It's great. 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 It's been great. It's crazy. What if you were like, it's been horrible? No, I, I mean, I got <laughs> Every one or day. two. I got one or two. Well, that's our first segment. Oh, the, yeah. You know, this week in haters. <laughs> have you? We're going to talk about haters. Uh, that's our first segment, this week in haters. We're going to talk because I got a beautiful note written to me. Some of. When you get hate from a from someone, sometimes it's like poetry. You're like, I can't believe <laughs> yeah. you wrote that. Also, my second guest, uh, but I don't want to order you guys, but you're the second one I'm introducing. <laughs> uh, what, what if you walked out? Like second, I'm like gonna rank you guys. I've known you longer, <laughs> so <laughs> we've hung out. You yeah, know, Gabe yeah. Malika, thank you for coming on. I'm excited to be here, Jared. Gabe has a one man show, mm. and it is in Boston, April 16th to 21st. Off Broadway show, I guess that, that, that is that the we maybe, I think we've talked about this before. Yeah, it's an off Broadway show, and it's moving to Boston for a week. And already J Train listeners, I have one J Train listener who messaged me. I'm coming in Boston. One J Train, we yeah. got one so down far, so far. Love it. We're gonna Love get it. to hundred. April sixteenth to the twenty first, off Broadway show. It's called Solo. It's about straight male friendship. Oh yeah. So that's a good thing that, you know, I just ranked you guys. Sure, sure. That, that feels very straight male. Yeah, this podcast is my only human connection with men. So this, this is, is it. This, this is, is all it. you got. I need Greg. Well, we're happy to have you here. Everyone go follow Gabe and Greg. Go watch the special. Go to Gabe's one-man show, Boston, April 16th, the 21st. Greg Stone, nobody presents Greg Stone. Let's get into the episode. Okay, now we're talking about This Week in Haters. Okay, I got, do you have a memorable hater? And this is the thing, like we, I want to start this conversation with, we give more airtime to the hate mm-hmm. than we do all the love. Like it's not fair percentage wise that we talk about the hate 90%, mm-hmm. but it's probably 90% love or indifference. Mike Cannon changed my life. He's, okay. I got the message. I know you're going to talk about, I got a horrible comment and he says to me, he goes, you're uh you're using a what's it called bias what's it called when you like confirmation bias confirmation bias he goes all of the people who say nice things mean nothing but you're looking for the person to say the bad thing so you can believe it right and it's fucking con- and when you put it like that I go oh shit it is confirmation bias right I'm being a guy who doesn't believe in the vaccine or doesn't believe in uh, any vaccine or any of the vaccines <laughs> you know like it, that's what I'm being right now right by believing the one loser. And that's the thing, and I, you know, I used to think this was a stupid topic for a podcast Mm -hmm. because I was like, 
We talk about it, no one can relate. But now I think TikTok has brought people in because TikTok is like the lead. TikTok, the way the algorithm works and because you spend most of your time on the For You page and not the people you've signed up for. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, on Instagram, it's the people you sign up for. To get something random that would upset you, it would be actually a surprise. Right. The For You page is built where I literally like you scroll up and it's like this grab bag. Mm -hmm. And then you go, what is this? And if you've made a video on TikTok, you have randos that right. don't know you, like you, think that want to talk about the thing you wanted to talk about that day that just randomly show up. Right. Oh, yeah. And then so I think the normies, the people who listening, the people who don't create stuff are more in tune with seeing these comments and seeing the anger that actually exists instead of just hearing about it, you know? And But it also does work with like, if you get a new jacket mm. and you're like, I love this new jacket and all your friends are like, it's great, I love it. And then one guy goes, that's a little tight on you. Yeah. That's the comment, it's just in the real life. That's the confirmation bias. That's the, that's one, the, you one, you that's the one you remember. That's the one that you lives remember. with you. Absolutely. Right. The one guy who went, that's eh, a little, that's a little young. Who would say such a thing? Well, that's why I'm telling people, <laughs> That's why I'm telling like I would never I would You're literally right. never speak to that person for the rest of my life. Right. They would be that's a little tight guy. And I'd be like, what a horrible hang. Right. And that's the thing, like I you know, I say email the podcast for advice and we're gonna be hard boy with you. Like, because we don't have to make eye contact with you, because we're not looking to hang out with you in the right. future. Like, it is an interesting thing. I was in Boca and I remember I was going to do shows in Portland, Oregon. And I remember I'm at like my parents golf club community and I'm talking to some guy at the bar and he's like, nice guy. And then I'm like, he's like, what's next on the tour? And I go, go to Portland this weekend. I was like, I was flying Boca yeah. to Atlanta, Atlanta to Portland. And he's like, ooh, Portland. Ooh. You know, he goes into go. the Portland. You're going to get hit with a bunch of heroin needles as you walk down the street. And I, you, all three of us who go to towns that people don't generally vacation in for the right. weekend, like Portland. I'm not saying, I go, it's actually pretty good, I get it. Like I get, right. you know, they got their problems. I, I see, I would say I see more of it there in a more extreme way. I would say that their homeless and, and drug addicted community is a more flamboyant bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. But I've also had some of the best meals I've ever had. Right. I've met some great people. I could understand why someone would go in for the night while living in the suburbs in this beautiful right. location. You got the mountains, you got the sea, you got to, you know, you got, there's so many options there. Like the idea that like, and, and I said, and I'm having this whole like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah they got their problems. And, and you could just see this guy was just like, get away from me. <laughs> He's like, why aren't you just agreeing with me? Right, sure. Everyone why aren't agrees. you just telling me the shirt looks good? Why should I? Yeah, but why should I? I? Well, that's the thing. That's that's how normal conversation works. Well, you're saying he should, you should agree with him that Portland sucks? He, he wants to go there. He wants me to scratch the itch uh, of, he wants me to just, we, he wants to just rub each other's back and go, yeah, Portland's right. awful. Oh, and, and us to go, and just, like, it's like a big, like, it's like a jack off, right. you know. Yeah. You know, you know, you want to sit there and jack each other off. Right. You don't want to go start jacking someone off, and then they go, uh, they kind of like give you half a jack off. Right. But if if you want me, to, if you want me to jack you off, yeah. Dress for the occasion. Do something nice. Don't be like ah. Be the only jack you off. Be like Portland's not so bad. Yeah, but that's Make it the, positive. I can I, jerk you off if we talk about how nice Portland is. But this I gotta is, go there. But this is my point: is that I want him to go. Oh, it isn't that bad? And he wants me to go, it's the worst place on earth. I know. You know, and we're both ruining each other's jack off. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? We're right. both like, why am I talking to this person? And I think that's the thing with haters is like, how did you get here? What? Right. Everyone right. agrees with me. You know what I'm doing? Oh. I mean, with the off-Broadway show, to me, I'm like, off-Broadway, everyone there is just telling you how amazing you are and and the art of it all like i feel like the arts community there's no hater you'd think so and then there's a there's like a rotten tomatoes for theater mm. and there's one review that just like i think about all the time all the time and all the time and it's 45 out of 45 out of 46 are really nice yes and one lady's like gabe should get over it and i'm like get uh, over it yeah. and you're like how could you even i put up this i put together mm. this piece yeah. that explained every nuance of why i shouldn't get over it yeah 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 and then yeah people are off okay I have so a, oh, go sorry. ahead please i have a thing no 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 go it's about the comment 
there's more to this that I would like to tell you. It's point. about your comment. It's about the So comments. I asked you guys so I will wait. to produce comments. Produce. Show so uh, show show me the comments. So we're going to go to mine, mine first. So this is the one that spurred this whole thing. Okay. Oh, Ready? This, this to me is a work of art. This is a work. Look how long it is. It is a work of art from an account that looked like it was created seven minutes before yeah. sending me this. And, and I will say, I just read this and I was like, I, I couldn't believe. And because I do think the negative commenters mm -hmm. have evolved. They've become self-aware. Mm -hmm. They aren't, you suck anymore. They're, they do. They're th learning. They're learning. Like <laughs> That's right. They are. They can open doors. They can open doors now because yeah. that used to be, you suck. It used to be, look at how gross you yeah. are. Look at the jacket you're wearing. Now it's, I used to be a fan. Right. I, I as a mother, they, they bring you in for the hug and then they whisper in your ear. You suck at everything you do. And the thing is, they know now too. Don't go hard. If they go, you're the worst. I go, oh, this guy's bullshit. But if they go, ah, eh, you're medium. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. They, they're they're like, oh, it, you the evolution me. of the hater. I'm yeah. trying to help. Cause I'm, I'm trying to help. I'm on your side. No, right. you're not. Leave me right? alone. Right. These are these are hate grifters. Right. They're they're like. So here's the comment. And this was I gotta say, a work. Of okay, art. I'm very excited. <laughs> yo, dude. My wife and I. Yeah, you already yo, dude. Right, Bring yo him dude. in for the hug. Yo, dude. Come yo, in. yo, buddy. Dap it up. My good friend Jerry. Yeah, no. <laughs> Got familiar real quick. Yeah. Yo, dude. My wife and I saw you at the La Jolla Comedy Store a couple years ago, and she listens to your podcast every week. I, I dig, dig your, your shit. now I Sorry. dig your shit. I dig your you shit. He's the fucking shit. I, I'm now, look at this. I, literally, I'm I reading this. Shit. When I'm at that, I dig your shit. I'm dancing. I'm right. like, yeah. oh, we got another fan. Yeah. I convinced the boyfriend. Uh, oh, I usually get I the girlfriend, but I dig your shit. I dig your shit. It's I dig a your shit. sandwich. Like yeah. it's for HR. That's right. <laughs> this is HR written. And I do have a question. Love to hear it. Yeah. You dig my shit. I love my shit. What do you want to get into college? Comedy? Do you want to know how do I come? How do I come up with this genius material? Is that what you're gonna wonder? At this point, this guy, I would have him open for me on the road. Absolutely. Oh, you want to come on? and you take my shit? You're in. Come you're for, on. Come I'm paying us. you. <laughs> yeah. I am so. I dig your shit, and I do have a question. You seem to give a lot of relationship insights, yet have been very unsuccessful in relationships. Oh no. <laughs> so wow. now wow. I'm like, oh, it, it is like almost, it's funny the way we're dissecting this mm -hmm. because at first I'm up here mm -hmm. and then I'm like, oh, he got me. Right. You know, now, right. I, 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 now it's like, oh, okay. He's coming in with his, let me, I brought you in. Yep. Now I got you my claws. Yep. Okay. Hey, that one thing you might be vulnerable about. Right. Let's put it in front of your now, fucking face. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, you give lots of relationship insights, yet have been very unsuccessful in relationships. That's actually like a crazy thing to write to someone. Like I, if I met someone who was unsuccessful in something, mm -hmm. I don't think I would ever say the word unsuccessful to them. Right. Like that's that's that is like one of those things I would never say to someone's face. Right. Very unsuccessful. Can, very. Can I say something too about this? This is just something. Hey, I, I know you went with. bankrupt. I know you've been very unsuccessful <laughs> in money. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. About this is what makes me mad. Success in a relationship isn't it going to the end. Mm. Success in a relationship is did you have a meaningful time with a person, right? And then it came to an end. If your wife dies, was it unsuccessful? Did you he, have a new one? Listen, I, I, <laughs> I've I met a lot of women who I've been that I've been in love with and had great times, and it ended. Those were all successful relationships, right? Because yeah. the success was what you learned from them. Yes, that's the positive. You know. He is coming in, or this person, I don't know, you know, because there's right. no avatar, there's no name. Right. And listen, they have been hurt by me. Right. In mm, some way. Right, right. I, I, I know this. So, like, you have to, and you don't come to these realizations or thoughts until after you've read it. But I'm, and I'm already, I'm not even midway through this message, but yeah. I'm like, uh oh, we got someone who's upset with me. Right. Yeah. Because I don't read that and go, I, I know you, you seem to have been very, unsuccessful relationships also this is something that doesn't affect me right. he's missed he's mm -hmm. it, it isn't an insecure of me of right. mine to be single and talking about dating stuff like i actually think you know bill belichick wasn't the greatest football player of all time right you know coach is coach great so i i, I listen point. i can give all the examples to rationalize why i should have an opinion I believe and, and i i also have an opinion on 
I've never put myself out as an expert, as people who are longtime listeners of this show know. Mm-hmm. I've always said, I'm the guy you're dealing with. I, <laughs> I'm what you got. I'm, I'm what you found. Right. I'm the guy you, right. like, I'm the man in your life. And I'm probably close to the one that's being cagey about your relationship. The one that you don't know what he's saying. And I can be more honest on a podcast than I can even be in my own life sometimes. Right. So yeah. I understand my place in this. And he, like, if he had written in, hey, man, I know you talk a lot about, like, health and wellness and stuff and you've been very unsuccessful in your own body like in how you look then i would be like way more and those titties are always showing when you wear a t-shirt i'd be like oh my god it'd be the jacket is it it doesn't fit so it is funny like i don't this is something that he wrote and i'm entertained by only because he's missed the bullseye right there are places he could have nailed you know what I mean? Right. And like, so he writes, like him coming to my show and having a, a good time on my show. He digs your shit. I, well, he digs my shit. <laughs> I dig your shit. That's the bullseye. <laughs> like, a t-shirt say, I dig your shit. Right. <laughs> but on the back it just says, ah, but another thing. But another thing. <laughs> Sorry. I uh, yet have been very unsuccessful in relationships. I am not trying to go into hater mode, uh, but he's going to, this is that preempts oh, no. hater mode. But I do wonder how you reconcile your feelings of speaking on a topic that you've proven yourself to be such a failure at. Oh, no. And then it's like a clenched teeth emoji, clenched teeth emoji. Like, hey, I know that was a weird thing to say. Again, you are a talented comedian in voice. That's the bullseye. If he had said you're the worst comedian who gives pretty good dating advice, I would be way more affected than this. Mm. And that's what the sure. inter- now I'm telling the assholes what they sure. should write. Right, right, right. Again, you're making them smarter. Right. You're typing into AI <laughs> right. you know, how to kill the humans. <laughs> right. And also a very impressive failure in your relationships. Could you spend more podcast time speaking to how your ignorance on relationships has affected your life? What did you do to this man? Something happened. Something. There, Something. Man. Well, that's the thing. It's like I don't read that and go, I oh, I need to readjust <laughs> what I do on an everyday basis. I would say. I, I think the question is actually very important, is, is an interesting one. Right. How Could you spend more time on podcast speaking to how your ignorance on relationships has affected your life? I would say my wokeness on relationships has affected my life. I am way more careful than maybe I should be in my relationships because I hear the screams mm-hmm. of all these people with right. the relationships issue. I hear all the problems. I am so aware of the things and how people are affected by no text back and the Instagram DM and the story watching and all these minutiae that go along with dating, that it does affect my dating life. It does make me think seven times on a subject when maybe I would have thought once. Mm -hmm. So it it is funny that from the mouth of hater Right. comes an important question. How does talking about dating Right. affect your life? And I actually think it makes me like, it makes men turned off to me because I they they go, what do you know? You know, and I'm saying things that their girlfriend go, well, Jared said, and now, oh, boy. and now they're kind of like, well, I'm kind of right, right? You know, sure. so it's created a lot of enemies for right, no sure. reason. This guy being one. <laughs> Let what do you guys me, think of this you, hater? You threaten this guy. I feel like your lifestyle, he's like, oh, you should be like me. You should be mm. doing what I'm up to. Mm-hmm. You're a failure. I, the implicit thing is like, I'm a success. I have a wife. We go right. to comedy shows in La Jolla. When, like, I don't think there's probably more to life than that, I guess. <laughs> right. I, I, right. And I would, I would say, like, you know, if you're writing me like this, it doesn't seem like success is feeling so good right now. Yeah, it That's probably feels awful. <laughs> right. What I'm is, oh, if, let me ask you, a person who would write an email like this, how does a person like that treat their wife? And are well, you in a successful marriage? Because... I'll be honest, you seem kind of angry. And if you're this angry at a podcast host, right. how mad are you at your wife? Well, that, I, would also s- you I would also say you're a master passive aggressive you know, yeah. person. Like, Gaslighter. I would, yeah, this, is, this, this message, when I, as I'm reading it and going through the highs and lows of it and you, the language being used, it is weaponized language. Yes. It is, and very purposeful. I, that's why I was so impressed by it. Because yeah. I, I read this and I was like, I've never felt so, you know, so... So romanced I mean, by hate. I want to ask you a question, Jared. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm a big fan. I love you. I love you as a person. Uh, this this feels like you saying, he, he no, uh, this is serious, this is, I hate to go into hater mode. Okay. No, no. Seriously, uh, yeah. seriously, man. I love you. You know, I love you. Yeah, you know, I love you, you too. Great, you know, whatever. I love how you. How does someone with... I love you. I love you too. Okay, good. How does someone with such medium talent... <laughs> <laughs> That's what this guy just did. 
right. That's right? it. I knew it was coming. Yeah, I, know. I knew it was I coming I the know. whole You kind of blew the joke before. I blew it. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I knew it was coming. But it's like, how do you fucking, it's like, that's the kind of shit. How Because I want to be like you. I want to be famous. I want to be rich and a comedian. I want to be the greatest of all time. How does someone who's not good, because I'm not good, <laughs> how do I get as much as you have with no talent? Well, Could the, you fucking imagine? Can you imagine living with this person? Yeah, They're saying. like, you know, as a wife who's so beautiful. How do you mess up the communication with me? <laughs> How do you mess up, you know, being in a relationship with me? Have you ever, so I, I wanted to like talk about hate in general, just yeah. like yeah. sometimes it's impressive. Like sometimes you like read these and you go, I, I don't know, I, I try to get inside the mind of a murderer and I go, yeah, this person seems to be unhappy with something. I'm sure maybe his wife took, I to my assumption, and I like I would actually love to have this guy on. Right. Like I would actually like to like interview him because I have done shows right. where they're the boyfriends next to the girlfriend and she's a big fan. And and I'll say, and I was, I'll, I've talked about this here, Nashville, there's a guy in the front just like not having fun. And right. I'm like having so much fun, making fun of how much not fun he's yeah. having. Yeah. And I go, what's up, man? He goes, she listens to your podcast. Every time, you know, we get in an argument, it's like, Jared said this, Jared said that. And I'm like, yeah, I would fucking be mad at me too. Sure. You know, like I, now you have this, she has a teammate in this argument mm. that I know I really can't win right now. Right. Because again, like a lot of these relationship things that we talk about here, like they're all diet and exercise. They're simple. Right. You know, it all comes down to like an answer that's like really annoying. Cause right. you're like, oh, go talk to your girlfriend. Go talk to your boyfriend. It's always Send simple. the text. It's always so simple. So it's like, I'm not saying anything that's genius. Like, you know, it's, it's just, but it's the thing that like, you know, I don't want to hear diet and exercise. Give me, right. The other solution. Also, of right. all the things that girl could be into, a comedy show is like a pretty fun one. Like she could well, get that, into like well, that's CrossFit the other, or something right, not fun. Right. Like the, he's going and they're enjoying something together. Yeah. And Two drinks and some jokes. It's fine. So listen, we I, I asked you guys to bring in your haters. Um, oh, yeah. So let's do, oh, no. Gabe, I want to get, uh, let's read yours first. Um, Gabe sent you 80. What? what are we doing? You could have just did one. So I want to do. <laughs> Gabe, what are you doing with yourself? Explain. <laughs> you wrote. Explain your hate. So my friend Alexis Gay and I made a video. She's been on the podcast before. Yeah, Alexis Gay, the best. She had. We made a sketch about how it was based on real life, which is I was like, oh, like I feel so much better on the days I eat fruit. And mm. she goes, you don't eat fruit every day, and I was like, no, of course not. And so we had this argument in real life, and we're like, oh, we'll make it a sketch. We never made a sketch together. 10 million views on Instagram, totally blew up. And then because so many people saw it, we started getting these hate comments about but how it, buying fruit is expensive. Well, again, this is the people uh, not in your funny. silo. Yeah. Oh, it, it gets outside and then you find out, you're like, wow, people hate people who talk about eating fruit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they were basically saying that you were being elitist. Yeah, the, the, these two like white guys in Brooklyn, white people in Brooklyn like eating fruit all the time. And we're like, Bananas are 40 cents. This is right. like the least elitist thing about me. Isn't it crazy? Fruit is not that exp I mean, okay, if you're comparing it to a McDonald's, McDonald's is even expensive now. Fruit yeah. is cheaper than McDonald's. We, we live in a story of two brothers. You can get dollar strawberries. Yeah. They don't know. I love fruit. So here's some of the comments. Fruit is just too expensive. I would eat more of it if I could afford it. <laughs> this is such. That's the craziest this thing is such. The, this is such internet I speak. This. Fruit is free. Well, Kill I think a fucking tree dog. Well, I think fruit is also seen as a side dish. So I think like mm. maybe that's their point. I'm, I'm trying to figure I'm out. Helping them. I'm not helping. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I feel better when I have fruit. No, I don't have fruit money. <laughs> fruit <laughs> money, fruit is, money hilarious. is hilarious. Well, this is the thing. You win on the internet, especially on the internet. Make yourself the bigger victim. Right. Right, you know, sure. you if you out victim, take the moral high ground. No one can mm. look at some, and especially with money, expense is like the right. number one thing that is so easy. Yeah, if the first to call it expensive is the winner, right? Mm. Because it's like I, I said this like Katz's Deli. People always, you, I get all these food reviewers on my TikTok feed. Katz's Deli always comes up, and the comments are generally like, "It's a fifty dollars sandwich," and I'm like. It, this isn't a sandwich I'm eating every day. Right. Like the yeah. idea that like someone goes to Katz, Pax Katz's Deli yeah. as their lunch for work <laughs> <laughs> every day is like yeah. actually crazy. It's a birthday place. But that's yeah. called nuance. That's called you know uh, like that's that, that, that's where the internet does. You, all you have to do to win on the internet is be a bigger loser than the person posting. Mm. Which in life 
if I'm a bigger loser in life, you're a loser. Right. Like if I come out on this podcast and go, man, I'm fucking broke. All the comments are like, look at this fucking loser. He's fucking broke. Right. It's like, I eat my ass. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It feels no, weird. it's okay. I feel too <laughs> I shouldn't talk like that. Eat my ass. Some, some, some people are like, oh, I wouldn't do you the favor. <laughs> the I don't have your ass eating money. Right. <laughs> Fruit makes me feel wealthy, like I'm a poor Victorian era child who someone threw half an apple to. It, that is, <laughs> I gotta say, that is, kind of funny. that is funny because it is a good visual of like, okay, that's how, well, that comment, fruit makes me feel wealthy, like I'm a poor Victorian era child who someone threw half an apple to. They just told you how they see themselves. Wow. Mm, because, sorry. you know, they not fruit makes me feel wealthy. No, no, no. Fruit makes me feel like I'm a poor Victorian era child who someone threw. Like the makes me feel wealthy doesn't even make sense. It would be fruit makes me feel like I'm the poor person that someone threw. I got to eat fruit. I just I I, 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 I don't know what a fruit is. I, <laughs> I, I can't get past this. This is crazy. Sorry. I Maybe, you know. but there's also these things. Look up food deserts. I've heard of these things are like where you can't get healthy food. Like there are places where it's like. <laughs> food desserts is different. If you just put in food, de fruit dessert. Yeah, I only know how to spell desert and dessert based right. on the emoji that comes up. That's how I check dessert. You know, the United States Department of Agriculture defines a food desert as an area that has either a poverty rate greater than or equal to twenty percent, or a median family income not exceeding eighty percent of the median family income in urban areas, or eighty percent of the nationwide median family income in non-urban areas. That didn't answer anything for me. Uh, what is a food desert? Like Sundays, cake? No. <laughs> There's definitely places where like they just build all fast food restaurants and no grocery stores. Sure, so that right. definitely exists. So I can understand where someone goes. I haven't seen fruit. You know, I, I guess that's a that's a response. And like the thing about the internet is that. We created a space where there's no car needed to go talk to each other. Like mm -hmm. you can talk to someone across socioeconomic, you know, uh, barriers that existed greater than they do now. Like the, you know, to hear someone, I guess I, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm not, you empath guys. I am empathizing with the hate because I go, where does it come from? And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't think if someone's writing, for, I don't think, you know, I do think people write. Ooh, Mr. Rich Guy, no matter how rich they are, right, right, right. just sure. to make sure that you are lesser than them. They're mm. trying to find a way. But you could I could understand that someone on TikTok could go, I haven't heard someone talk about fruit right. my whole life. Sure. You know, and you go, Oh, I feel bad. You know, like, but and it you know, is, is interesting. Fruit you probably never saw this coming. No, no, no. Well, I I think it's part of the reason it went so viral. Is like people started fighting in the comments about fruit. And like a lot of right. people were like, This is so funny, this is me. Because I played the guy that doesn't eat fruit every day, and she plays the person that eats fruit every day. So right. people are like tagging their boyfriend, like, "Oh my god, you haven't had fruit in two months." Right. That's like the that's the outcome you would expect is sure. you don't eat fruit not because you can't find the shekels in your pocket to get the banana. You know, right. like yeah. you're not Aladdin. You know, you think of this as like, oh, I'm just a guy who doesn't think to drink. You know, you could do the same sketch about drinking water. Sure, that's the final joke. No, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Jared's going to punch this up. Yeah, I, I, right. I, also, I mean, I'll say this. As a guy who was very, very poor for a really long time, for, I understand the fruit thing in, in the fact that, like, when you're making – making food doesn't – isn't just – it takes time. Right. Right? And when you work a fucking 15-hour shift, come home to your kids, Fast McDonald's. Foods, right. Get I it get done. It. I get uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you buy fruit, sometimes you don't – whatever, and it just goes bad. But right. my wife's a nutritionist. I didn't drink water. Until I got married. Like, it was Coke <laughs> until I was, like, 25 years old. Yeah. And a lot of drugs just uh, right up the nose. <laughs> I was a Coke head. <laughs> right. 13 years old. No, but, like, my wife was like, oh, we're going to introduce water, and we're going to do fruit, and we're going to do vegetables. And that is the funniest. That's a sketch in itself. A wife introducing <laughs> water <laughs> into her husband's diet at the my age of were, 35. My eyes were indefinitely black. Just a dry <laughs> until I met her, and she was like, "Oh, you're gonna drink water now. We're gonna do this. We we got a plan here. <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta make this dead tree grow. Yeah." And I recently found I really found out that I was like I'm pre-diabetic and I was getting close to diabetes. Mm. And my wife was like, "Okay, no, game, fucking gloves are off now. 
you don't get to choose anymore. She's like, what are you eating every morning? And I'm like, well, I have a bacon, egg, and cheese, and a bagel every single day. <laughs> and she was like, oh. Wait, what? <laughs> she goes, well, we don't, I know what we need to do. That's gone. <laughs> and I lost 10 pounds. I have a bacon, egg, and cheese, <laughs> and a Coke every morning? No Coke. Oh. I had a bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel. Every, every morning. single day. Every single day for, I would say, for the past like two what years. What was your treat? Oh, the treat? Yeah. <laughs> the treat? Like, the treat like to me, breathing. a bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel, like, I'm like, okay, Jared, yeah. today's the day. <laughs> There's like preparation put in. I'll do it tomorrow. You the know. treat is two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Double Run up. Yeah. Run it back. Yeah. Yeah. I, let me read a couple more of sure. these. Perfect example of how Democrats live in denial that they that. can't <laughs> afford fruit anymore and continue to support Biden. Like, you have to be a crazy person That's the to immediately go into Biden town from, these, hey, I don't eat enough fruit. They're like jujitsu. They're like, I got the guy on his back. How can I work Biden right. into this? <laughs> it's crazy. It's like, how do I fucking get? No, no one can afford a fruit, a fruit every day if you want to have savings for for fun stuff that well that's like the you know the if you for fun make stuff. your coffee every day you'll save five bucks a day by the end of the year you'll have seven thousand dollars and it's like i i it's it's just a miss it's a fallacy yes. the idea that you can't save and eat fruit right a bacon egg and cheese cost me 13 dollars a day at the place i'd go so yeah 13 dollars a day a banana cost me 50 cents and a banana you know like and this is the thing you know when you talk to any nutritionist it's about getting fiber in your diet because yes. it fills you up for longer and you want like you know high volume low calorie extra fiber yeah and it's like you know when you hear someone be like no you can't even do fun stuff if you're eating a banana <laughs> how am i gonna go on the roller coaster <laughs> i'm eating apples <laughs> first of all suck the banana that's pretty fun <laughs> do that you fucking okay let's go to greg's hater um now where are these from what what where did you you i asked greg oh, for hate for hater uh oh. messages and you went straight to reddit which is like that to me is like tatooine yeah you know for like Moss Eisley, <laughs> the biggest set of sc scum <laughs> and villainy i've ever seen yeah yeah, yeah. Is, yeah i went to a reference greg would love yeah, i, I appreciate yeah, it. yeah yeah you i tried i tried <laughs> the, 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 just this feels like the water cooler for hate yes so wh where did you find this and then so we'll read it i do a radio so every now and again i do this radio show and the radio show ha is the comments are so fucking vile <laughs> on reddit <laughs> but i was i don't know why i did I guess I was looking to kill myself. I was like, I don't want to be on Earth anymore. How, yeah. How do I make this quicker? How do I? I searched. How do I in, sp inspire myself? Yeah. I searched in Greg Stone on Greg Stone in the Reddit and like, yeah. let's just see what comes up. Okay. Now I gotta tell you, this is a little bit of a story. I apologize. Give but it I think us. it's worth it. Sure. Um. I so I typed this thing in. Let me just set this up. Two years ago, I did a show in upstate New York. Okay. It is. <laughs> I didn't know this is where I we're know. Going. I apologize. Okay. But I think it's worth it. Upstate New York. I do this show unregulated animals there's a table of just drunk women family and not kids but just like the husbands and, and these women are just out of control screaming is hammered. it in a bar is it in the back of a bar well it's like a wedding venue so it is okay. huge round tables i got gotcha. stages too high so you're in a function room of a hotel yes. so to speak big tables and they're already gone it's in albany it's no it was like it was like no, it's like a town you'll never go to like again. Like Poughkeepsie area, like Ellenville. Palinville? I think it's called Palinville. I think okay, it so it's in the Catskills, would you say? Three hour drive. Okay, at least whatever. I'm doing the thing. These women in the front are hammered to the point, and then checking their phone and on their phone and calling people. I have to during the show, I took their phones, put them on stage. Wait, wait, wait. you were on stage, and then you walked into the crowd, took their phones while on stage. On stage, middle of my act. I, I couldn't, whatever. They just wouldn't get off the phones. <laughs> yeah. So I took their phones from them. Put them, in a yonder I put them on stage. I said, every time you scream, I'm going to smash a phone. This is what I said. And then I went, what are you doing, Greg? You <laughs> went Gallagher. <laughs> See, I was going to Gallagher their phones. There's fruit. And I'm like, right. I can't <laughs> smash these people's phones. So what am I going to do? I was like, right, here's what, it's raining outside. I go, all right, what I'll do is I'll take their phones. I go, you want your phones back? I ran them outside with a wireless mic, left them outside, said, go get your phones so that some of them would go and I locked them out. As that's happening, there's a wait. Yeah, this the show is happening during a All comedy during show. show? Okay. All during my 45. Okay, you may deserve the hate that you're getting for this. But okay, okay. do I? Was it? They were uncontrollable. I people. just don't understand how. Was there anyone else to like go over to yeah, them? You out? No, one no one was there. policing the room at all. Okay, I mean, it got to the point. That Weren't were, other people in the room going? 
Hey. Yes. Yeah. The entire room hated them and they were unbeatable. These people were like, nope. Right. We're screaming the whole time. We don't give a shit. Yeah. I eventually, what I had to get to to get to that point was Lee taking their phones and throwing them out. I, I, I told Lee, like, you guys got to leave. They wouldn't leave. Yeah. Like, well, now what do I do? Physical violence? Right. right? Also, a, these the... aren't the enemies. I, I haven't even unveiled the, the enemy yet. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> so I throw these people out. I finally get them out. And people are cheering. And some guy goes, no, fuck that. Crowd work them. He starts screaming, crowd work them. <laughs> like, that's a thing. Crowd work them. Crowd work them. Matt this Rife. is fucking mean. We need right. you. brings in Matt Rife. He's like, like bring is, it. Yeah. I am crowd working them. Literally. Yeah. What are you talking about? Crowd work them. I just crowd work them out of the room with my phone bit. I, yes. Yeah, okay. Crowd work them. Crowd work them. And I'm going, dude. Crowd work them. What are you talking about? And he goes, I am. I love comedy. I know comedy. You should be crowd working them. And I'm like, and he's and now it's going on back and forth. And I'm like, dude. Shut the fuck up, right? Like, yeah. let me continue my doing my thing. And he was like, uh, he was screaming. And I said, listen, all right, you think you're the hero here? And I said, the crowd, I said, who wants him to stay? Thumbs up, he stays. Thumbs down, he you goes. Roman Coliseum him. Roman Coliseum him. They go, they boo him. And I go, seize that man. <laughs> and like, people in the crowd stood up and they were like, and he just, they, he eventually, he, he got out, right? Ushered out. And I went, that is one of the wildest things that ever happened in my life. That whole story is crazy, mm. whatever. Uh, come to the Reddit thing, right? So now you type your name into Reddit. This is years later. It's years later. It's yeah. two years later, right? I'm commenting, and I see that there is a Greg Stone sucks in the radio show's Reddit page. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it's all these people talking about how much they hate me, right? Really? I'm, I'm like, this guy sucks, right? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, it hurt me. And I'm like, he comes in too high. He's high sometimes, which, you know, Big Daddy Vape shows up Big sometimes. Big Daddy Vape sometimes <laughs> yeah, shows his face. Today he didn't show yeah, his yeah, face. Yeah, okay. you know, sometimes he shows his face. He tries too hard, all this shit. And uh, it comes to one comment, which I'll read is, I saw him at a local bar a year ago. It wasn't a bar. Uh, he was telling people to get off, get off their phones, took drinks out of their hands, and eventually took people's phones and walked them outside and left them in the rain. <laughs> what a douche, right? So crazy to they read on me. its own. This is the guy who started the thing. Yeah. And I go, I know who you are. So I wrote to him, I go, oh, I know who you are. You're the man. <laughs> you wrote back to him. Who I threw out, right? And then I went, let me look at these other people. Now, these aren't these comments. And all the other people, if on Reddit, all their karma was like one. All their, all their pages were started like three days ago. So all of the people hating me on this Reddit throne we're one man. It was him talking to himself. Oh, he kept creating accounts. Creating accounts, starting a I hate Greg vibe. Right. This one that says, Greg is a textbook narcissist. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I look, I know a lot about myself. I'm like, <laughs> they missed the bullseye. I'm that, not that, a well, that's, that's why it didn't affect you. Right. They missed and, it. And yeah. I was like, this is crazy. I, st I still can't believe people like him exist. How can he have such little self-awareness? I'm the most, to a fault, <laughs> self-aware person. <laughs> to a fucking nightmare fault that I don't, I don't sleep at night. How much I'm aware of myself. It's classified as mental illness. All right, I do have mental illness. Narcissists are fascinating because they believe everyone thinks exactly like them. Almost as if other people are simply an extension of them. What is he even referring to? That doesn't make I mean, any fucking sense. It, it is crazy. I, that is like very much therapist speak. I'm going to use big words sure. to make it sound like I know more than I do. When you say textbook narcissist, that's just not like a phrase people use. Right. Like it's not even like has any backing. They just go, if you say it, you almost like people don't, they back away from you. It's almost like taking a stick and lighting it on fire because you go, I'm not smart enough to deal with someone who uses the phrase textbook right. narcissist. You know, like right. I, I get I've what I've read happened. the DSM. Right, right. This guy, <laughs> no DSM for this guy. No way. I love Factor because they're going to send you a box that is creative and delicious. When you want to be healthy, you have a couple ideas. There's like grilled chicken, there's steamed broccoli, there's salmon, and then maybe some whole wheat pasta, and then you're out. You're done. And that's when you get off of the straight and narrow. This keeps you going on your health journey because every box is gonna be creative and delicious and fun and new and keep you excited about being healthy. Everybody's different, that's why Factor has created meal plans that are perfect for vegans, vegetarians, people eating keto, high protein, or counting their calories. Head to factormeals.com slash JTrain50, use code JTrain50 to get 50% off your first box plus 
20% off your next box. They're giving away free money. That's code JTRAIN50 at factormeals.com slash JTRAIN50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while you subscribe plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Remember the time you took your shoes off at your date's house and the whole apartment smelled like feet? With Lumi, you never have to worry about hot boxing somebody with your body odor ever again. Choose from scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, and toasted coconut, and get ready to smell great on even the muggiest days. I love Lumi. I love it because they've really thought of everything. They've got so many different products that you can use to make you smell great and they smell delicious. Toasted coconut, you wanna take a bite out of it. It's delicious. And they come in different ways. You can get cream so you can put it on your feet. With 72 hour odor control, you can put this stuff on your pits, your privates, under your boobs, anywhere you have odor you wish you didn't. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for JTRAIN listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code JTRAIN15. If you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that's over 40% off the starter pack. So you're going to get a great deal. Use code JTRAIN15 for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code JTRAIN15 at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Let's do an I'm My Crazy Dog, okay? This is a user listener submitted one. You can send in your I'm My Crazy Dogs to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. You can also comment on YouTube with an I'm My Crazy Dog and let the commenters have at it, and then we'll read it on the show. Yeah. Jared, love the pod, and had an Am I Crazy Dog hit me in the face while having dinner with my boyfriend tonight. Am I crazy that I get grossed out when he drinks out of my water bottle, but I have no prob... I have no, am I crazy that I get grossed out when he drinks out of my water bottle, but I have no problem kissing him? The thought of watching him chew his food and know he's t then backwashing into my water bottle makes me want to squirm. But if he wanted to stick his tongue down my throat after that same bite, no problem. Is this just me or are there certain lines that feel weird to cross even though they make no sense at all? Backwash baby. What do we think? Are they crazy dogs? I will say you're, I want to say this. Yeah, I think you're a little crazy. But mm. I want to relate with this person because my son, what he does, he's two. He likes to drink his water, spit it all back in, take a piece of his hard boiled egg, throw that in the cup, stir it, and then goes, da da drink. Da -da, Come drink. on. And I got him like, what are you going to do? It's like, I know if I don't drink. I would say no. I try. He's got to learn that those don't go together. <laughs> <laughs> That's a learning moment. That's not you just going along. That's when you go, hey. You gotta pick Hey, the Calvin. <laughs> I'm eating a bacon, egg, and cheese right now, but I, I, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I know that this is gonna be a fight, and I pick my fights, and I know if I, if I right. drink the water, there's one fight I don't gotta have. Also, my son, just you know, he likes to take uh, uh, grapefruit and dip it in ketchup. Baby children. Grapefruit and ketchup. Children are crazy. Well, this is the thing. This is like where the parent versus the non parent world divides. I'm like, What's gross? What's not gross? The related, you know, there's some things that people go as a parent and mm -hmm. I can't understand how you don't even understand. And I go, ah, but this is one where I guess the gross stuff, you, you see a human right. take a grapefruit, dip it in ketchup. Dip I don't ketchup. know. Well, hold on. I think this is a little your fault. Why are grapefruit <laughs> and ketchup out at the same meal? Well, because whatever we feed him, he demands ketchup. And oh, so he's go, a ketchup guy. He will take a cup. He will take a spoon and just he just spoons in ketchup and ranch dressing. And and this is a thing kids do. Ketchup and ranch dressing. No, no, no. He'll just take ketchup with a spoon and eat it like a soup. And okay. He's never been happier. And uh, I told my wife, you know, he's dipping can uh, whatever. What got him into the ketchup game? I think that like he gave him ketchup to dip for his chicken fingers, and then he was like, I don't even like the chicken. Yeah, just, like, get rid of this. And then bring other things I like. And so he takes his grapefruit and he dips it, and I go, Oh, Kevin. And my wife goes, Don't yuck. His yum. And oh. I, went, I think my wife's been listening to the J Train podcast. I think so. <laughs> I don't really ever heard that either. <laughs> don't yuck his yum. And yeah. I'm like, You're right. I'm not going to yuck his yum. She's well, like, Coach is coach. She's like, Let, let this it. kid go. I, I guess, like, there, yeah, I guess I would understand, like, he's eating. He's eating. We just want him eating. Right. But I do think that they're not crazy. I you think that. Crazy? Well, no, because here's the thing when you eat 
and then drink, it feels like it's a one. It, it goes eat and then drink. Sure. And then it fe- you can understand where like the food. When you go to kiss someone, she goes, they could take that same bite and stick their th- tongue down my throat. It does feel like before you kiss, you like, you know, yeah, you sure. suck it all in. Right. You know, it doesn't feel like you would do the same. I think this is like the same. Uh, Gabe, what do you think? I think part about being in a relationship is sometimes somebody has a preference and you're just like, that's an easy thing I can do for right. you. I just right. won't drink out of your water bottle. I'm a hero. Yeah. You like it. Great. Whatever right. you say, babe. It's much easier than like doing something hard. Yeah. Like, right. In a relationship, you want to be doing as many check boxes as you can. Mm. So I don't think she's crazy at all. Be nuts. Well, here's the other thing. Here's what I would compare it to. I don't think she's crazy because I do think what she writes at the end. Is this just me? Or are there certain lines that feel weird across even though they make no sense at all? Mm-hmm. I think it's like getting naked in your kitchen. Uh, do you know what I mean? Sure, it doesn't like, belong here. Right. I don't belong here yeah. naked you know like i don't you know and there's knives close to penises you got burning penis bur- there's heat Hot sources stuff. heat sources <laughs> right and it just feels wrong and i live in a studio so i it, it is interesting that mm-hmm. if i got naked and i'm in the living room which is attached to the bedroom and if i got naked in the living room if i made a left uncomfortable because that's the kitchen mm-hmm. if i make a right comfortable because it's the bathroom yeah. And I do think this kind of lives in that world, right? Yeah. Where you go, I, I don't have an explanation for this, but the... Naked on tile, kitchen tile. You're yeah, two feet away. We've been to your Right. Apartment. You You've been there. Cube <laughs> protection from getting to the food. If you're naked, there's a little bit easier chance of pubic hairs entering... How long are your pubes? How long? (laughs) Like, what do you you have a... (laughs) That was very Seinfeld. How long? Long Greg's pubes. I mean, long enough to catch fire like a a candle wick? (laughs) No, No, I'm saying one could get loose and enter the fruit plate or something. Oh, the the pubes could fall off of you like like leaves off a tree. Yeah, Yeah. blue in the air. We need a little hairnet. But then also we want to argue that hair on the head would be dirtier than a pube, I'd imagine. At least a pube hair is... I think, yeah, the pube is covered. Sure. But naked, I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, it's a little bit like, you know, it's grapefruit with ketchup. Don't yuck their yum. Don't yuck their I get the naked in the kitchen thing. It's, it's a place, there's a time and place. Right, it doesn't feel right. It's, a, you know, it's a it's a, back to Seinfeld, that the doing things naked, like there's good naked, bad naked. There's good backwash, there's bad backwash, but I also don't think people kiss... The way as as freely right. as freely as they do drink, mm. right? So I think that's also part of this. Like I don't think anyone eats a bunch of Ritz, right. And then would ever stick their tongue down your throat, like without doing the thing <laughs> with the back example. of their, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> this is a little gross. But if I'm making out my wife and a little roast beef gets in my mouth from her mouth, you go, it's gross. But I go, I don't know. You like the tongue. You right. also like the roast beef. Why not together? I'm a, I'm not easily grossed out when it comes. I but I do kind of the way they describe it. Yeah, the back, I, get it. I think the word backwash also adds to the mm-hmm. disgusting nature because backwash makes it sound like there is literally like clumps of food in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and and I think that word is like it's dramatic. It's very dramatic, and it's like a, an amazing marketing thing. Yeah. Because you, you heard that growing up, it's like no, oh, I don't want your backwash, and you'd be like immediately embarrassed. It's like. Yeah, that is gross. That's the last little sip. But you would never look at it and go, yeah, I can see, you know, a whole leaf in there. It's, it was never that right. extreme. This is kind of like the toothbrush thing. My wife very much will kiss me all the time, but yeah. me using her toothbrush is like no go. She doesn't like it. Doesn't <laughs> it's not like allowed it. in your house? And I'll say, I don't Have lie Have you to my tried? Wife. I don't lie to my wife. That's our big rule. <clears throat> really don't, the one thing I do lie about mm. is that something, I've been a few times where I forgot my toothbrush. And I just look around and I'm like, where's she at, right? And I'll brush and then I put it back and I dry it. Like, oh, what are you doing? You'll she's a big later. fan of this podcast. She's going to hear this. She's going to hear, you know, maybe a divorce after. That's yeah. fine. Wow. <laughs> she's fine with it. Um, she's fine let's, with everything. Okay, let's go to the next uh, segment. We we have a, a different segment here. Um, I, okay. I wanted to talk about why men don't ask you out. We're three men mm-hmm. sitting here. And I went on TikTok, and we actually invited the TikToker on the podcast. Whoa! But they they declined the the invite because they're I, all cowards. I, I listen. I don't. This wasn't like a gotcha journalism oh. moment. Yeah. I got, what? Let's go to her TikTok. Um, and she was like, I, I. She commented on mine something. She's got a following, 
and she had commented on my stuff, and this is Annie K. Schaefer. Everyone should go follow them. They do fun, fashion, and talking about boys. And she has a business email. Obviously, they're in, you know aspiring to be a commentator on fun, fashion, and, and, and boys. Sure. Okay, which is great. And I invited them on the show because you go to their, I, you know, when someone comments on your thing, it was like they commented on my like bachelor stuff and it was like that they they were laughing. And I'm like, oh, this is a bright profile that has a following. And then I go to their um their link page. And they have she has a Google Drive and you can download this flow chart. And I just, you know, sometimes you come over something and you go, what is this? You know, like you go down the rabbit hole sure. of someone's profile. It's kind of what I always envisioned for me. Like I always envisioned that I would keep putting out content. And I've been doing this now for 13, 14, almost 14 years of putting out stuff on the internet with the idea that someone would go, who is this guy? Right. And then become a fan. Right. Oh, wow. Podcasts and stand up and right. show dates. Look at the treasure trove of things that all are there. Yeah to make me laugh and have a good time. Right. And that's kind of what I've always tried to do. And so then I go to this person's profile and it says they have a flow chart teaching, I think it's their biggest video. Let's go to, it is like, let's play it. It's teaching men how to ask women out. Oh boy. Well, she gets like angry comments from men who don't like that she's teaching them how to ask them out. But I was like, I, I, you know, I, I was like, this is interesting. The idea that some man is out there working, living, breathing, right, and doesn't know how to ask a woman out, right, as an mm. adult. I, I actually don't buy the premise. Mm. I actually, when I, because I, and that's why I wanted to do but this. You're charismatic, and I don't know that you've ever had to deal with this. Sure. This is why I brought on a sensitive and a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm not a nerd like that. No, that's what I'm saying. That's, well, you speak. I put it down. Right. <laughs> These are the hard boys. <laughs> Let's not forget well, it. Well, that's why I wanted a male panel for this. Sure. Because mm. I was looking at this and I was like, well, go to the flow. Let's just go to the flow chart. Because I was looking at this and I was like, I don't think this is like helpful to the if i not to speak for the women out there right to the female cause to like to say well they don't know how to do it so let's teach them it almost lets someone who's not asking you on a date off the hook in my opinion right. it's, it, it is you're teaching someone who knows perfectly well what they're doing perfectly well and you're holding their hand through something that they shouldn't really have their hand held through at all right like i just don't think i think there's a an element of darwinism to going on dates where it's like, when I get the response all the time, he's too shy to ask. I just don't buy it. Right. I think people, big dog gonna bark, big dog gotta eat. He right. gonna eat. Right. Calvin, if you said no more ketchup, at some point Calvin would go, would break his hunger strike. Right. And he'd start eating something. So yeah, he eats other things. I just want to make a change. He eats other things. Well, listen, you feed him ketchup, and that's it. Like a bottle, like a baby <laughs> bottle. Ketchup. Squirt Squirt in ketchup. his mouth. He just hold them in your hand. <laughs> Squirt the ketchup. He's still eating fruit just with ketchup. So here's the flow chart. Start, right, start match with a new woman on the dating app and begin conversation. Like this is, and this is all directed for men to look at, right? right. This is this is her saying, "Here you go, man, who doesn't know how to." And I would just say to her. This is now, to me, you're building this for women to make fun of men or to commiserate with women who aren't getting asked out. Well, they don't even know how to do it. That's why you're not getting asked. I would say men know more than we are. And, and honestly, let us off, they're letting us off the hook. Mm. You're basically saying, because when, I, so it goes match with uh, someone on a dating app. And then it, the arrow goes down. Do you want to meet this woman in person? Yeah. And then it's like, no. Now you go back to matching with a new woman on a dating app. Or you go forward, that yes. Pretty, that seems pretty rhetorical. <laughs> right. Did you I, I, them? Did you find them wildly ugly? Go back and start again. Well, <laughs> Do not pass go. Yeah. Well, it, it, I think it skips a step. Do you want to meet this person, in, in, in this woman in person? Like, I, there, here's the disservice right away. Yeah, because you got to have some rapport, usually, some rapport in the app. Right. So it's like match on the app. Do you have a good discussion? Yeah. Now it's, 
do you want to meet this per? Do you want to pay for drinks? Mm. Should be the next thing, or do you want to? You know, it, it, or it, it should really have two things right here, where it's like, do you want to meet this person for drinks, or would you be okay making out with an alley with ever, without ever speaking again? Right. Mm. Okay. Because I think that's where the misconception comes in. It's like it's not that we don't know how to ask on the date. Like, what are reasons that you would? Like, I, I understand the idea of, like, yeah, I'm on the app and I'm dating someone else and this conversation was pretty okay, so I'm just going to, like, hang around here and hover and see what happens here. Right, right, right. And I don't think, and I again, men love vague relationships. Mm. What do you mean? So I think a lot of men want no labels, want to live in the vague. When you ask someone, are you dating someone? They're like, ah, you know, we, 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 we sure. you know, and... You ask, you know, and I think a lot of women want, what are we? Right. Tell me, chop my head off <laughs> or bring me to the promised land. Sure, sure. Want me or hate me? Mm. What do you guys think of this? I, I, I just think the flow chart is like, to me, a disservice to the people she's looking to help. Well, I think I was, see, it's different for me. I'm, you know, I'm at the game long time. Yeah, you're but a married I'm, man. But when you met Tita, how did you meet? So I met Tita. We went to on a ski trip. And uh, I, uh, we were having a good time. I made her laugh. My flow chart is: look at them, make them laugh. Did mm. they laugh? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Made her laugh. Tried to kiss her. She went, "Are you out of your fucking mind?" Uh, okay. I, went, I thought I had a chance here. Then. But that's a man. What? That's a man. That that to that's me. That's the most exciting part. But that's the. <laughs> Go with you for are it. you you are, but you're saying this as a guy who's out of the game. I never was in the apps. But you were never on the apps. Yeah, but I'm saying apps. that's where you're – that's human instinct. Yeah. Make her laugh. Go, go for, for it. Go for it. And, and Pull it out. Pull <laughs> <laughs> Your lips, I mean. But I, I wouldn't consider you this, like, hot shot, leather jacket wearing guy that goes in the bar and picks up women. You're Jean Jacket Greg. Jean Jacket Greg, baby. <laughs> I, I, but I, w I, I think – I dig your shit. You're, <laughs> you're going to make someone laugh, but I never would see you as this, like um, – like I, I wouldn't see you as like this Casanova giving lines match, you know. Like no, uh, you I'm know. sweet and I'm funny. That's it. And I let them see that as fast as possible. But that's but that's the thing where someone could go, and he might be shy. Mm, like if you I didn't was. ask them out, if you didn't ask someone out, if you didn't just go for it, it because you weren't interested. No, no, I I was in love with a girl who was my best friend for about 15 years. Really? And just, I was afraid. I was like, I even said things like, what the friendship, I would I would hate to lose her as a friend. This, right. This matters more. And now looking back, it's like, you fucking idiot. I should have just went for it. I was scared. Right. I guess the, the difference to me is that it's a friendship that started in a place that the arena wasn't dating in love. Right. On a dating app, you're on a dating app. Right. The purpose of speaking is to see if we go on a date. If someone doesn't ask you on the date, the reasons are, I would say, on the bottom of the list is that they don't know how. Mm. Gabe, what do you think? Yeah, don't know. We do know how. Instinctually, right. you can figure that out. Um, it's a tricky situation. I feel like there are times when I've been like a little nervous to ask someone out. Sure. But if you like them enough, like everyone I've ever had a crush on has basically found out at some point. Like right. they never, never find sure. out. Sure. Right. Whether it's in the moment or even like a little bit later. They're going to learn. Are you on dating apps? I'm not right now. I'm dating somebody. You're seeing someone? I'm seeing someone. And how, how did you meet? Uh, <laughs> no, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> We're back, baby. Men are back. <laughs> we did it. Dumb fucking joke. <laughs> Tom Segura over here. Yeah, oh, my really God. Like, you know they live uh, on the podcast. Gonna... <laughs> well, you know what's interesting is that her sister-in-law saw my show and a year ago and DM'd me, love the show. This was my favorite joke. You should date my sister-in-law, who I went to college with. And I, I hold like, on. So I think this is an interesting conversation because yeah. this is a, you know, as far as setting people up, you should date my sister in law. Yeah. Did you have any information who the sister in law was? You we, had the, we knew each other in college. So she knew that you had a background with the sister in law. Yeah. Okay. This is good. And we that's both. a good setup. You should date my sister in law. She is letting you know, you, uh, bait, let, let, you know, if you go in the, the, the percentages, if you go to your, you know, your, your beautiful mind, mind, yeah. you go, okay. I'm willing to bet the sister-in-law gave her the go-ahead to 
of some sort to tell me I should make a move. It was it was not only you should date my sister-in-law, it was so strong it was I'm looking for a brother-in-law. It was like oh, not subtle at all. Great. And here's her number. She's on the road, she's coming back. You should date. And I ignored her for 8 months and was just like, "Oh, thank you for coming to the show. I appreciate you." And then I matched with this girl on Hinge. So because I had the confidence of, "Oh, somebody already tried to set us up." Sure. I was like I was maybe more forward than I would have been normally. Well, let's go back because to reference the dating flow chart, the whole premise of this flow chart, yeah. whether it's joke or not, because I'll give her, you know, I'll, sure. I'll say maybe this was like, this is a way to commiserate with other women who aren't getting asked out on the apps. This is a way to laugh at it. Mm. So totally understand that could be the case with this. And not to, I'm not like looking to like, that's why I wanted to invite her on because I would, I, would, I asked, I wanted to ask, was this a joke to commiserate or do you really feel that men don't know what they're doing? Mm. They don't know how to ask a woman out on a dating app. Whether they do it right or wrong, not knowing how to me is a, you're treating someone with kid gloves and they're letting you do it. It's easier to be like, they don't know how to ask out than to be like, oh, maybe he just doesn't like me. Or yes, or maybe he just is looking for something else that's a little icky. Mm. You know, I'm gonna live below, because here's the thing. When you're on a dating app, I've been on dating apps for years. I'm gonna speak from my experience. Yes, I've been unsuccessful in relationships <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> but I know how these people, me, right. acts. Mm. You get on a dating app, you start talking, you chit chat, and then at a certain point, tick, 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 tick. The clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. Ask her out or get the fuck out. Right. And, and those are the options. How quick? I never really. How it, quick? Can I just be like, "Hey, want to go out? Hey, you're pretty. People, it's all I know. Want to try?" People do that, right? And I, you know, listen. There's there's a argument to be made for that. Okay. Hey, I think you're pretty. I you're you seem pretty cool. I'm gonna be out tonight. Would love to meet for a drink. I think that's a normal as normal okay, a way fine. of what you're saying to do that. I also believe a little chit chat. I don't want to waste my time at 39. If I was on a dating app, I'm not right now. I would want to chit chat to go, oh, let's feel the vibe out. And then, and then we have to go somewhere. You have to go somewhere. Now, there's a lot of men just want to rack up, you know, matches. And maybe they're seeing someone else and they don't have the time. And they're like, I got to hover here. Mm. And maybe they're just looking to hold on to it for the if and when. Right. Or maybe they're just like there to hook up and they're waiting for someone to go, hey, I got to know you here. <laughs> let's, yeah. I I'm out. Is it cool to be like, hey, listen. I'm eating something right now, but I'd like you for dessert. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta wait like a week. I'll be done Greg, in a week. Greg, <laughs> it is funny to say this is how nice a guy Greg is, and how, how you can tell Greg's a good person. Textbook narcissist. What no, textbook narcissist, <laughs> but, yeah. but a good guy because what you just said is the cleanest version of that happening ever. Does he, like, oh, like, it happens. Like, really? like what oh, you yeah, just said over. is like the most kind way to be like, I, I you know, as opposed to like. I mean, the stuff I see, I get sent to me where it's like, yeah. hey, uh, you know, I think you're hot. I got my dick out. I'm waiting for you. Like, <laughs> you know, like there's a there's a, an Instagram uh, account that I follow and she's actually come to my show. She's very nice. Uh, a little nudge <clears throat> and a little nudge. You know, she puts out a lot of like the disgusting of men on these apps. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think she's a little bit guilty of doing the same thing that this person Sarah's doing, which is like, they must not know. And right. it's like, we know. And I and I want to go back to your experience with your now girlfriend, yeah. where you're like, you were given the number. You were told, you know, uh, I want you to be my new brother-in-law. Yeah, starting at 10. And yeah. then you said something specific. You go, I ignored it. Yeah, I ignored it. Why you, that that's not I didn't know how to ask her out. Yeah. What was the what was the premise of why if at your most honest you could ever be, why did you ignore it? I ignored it was a really like busy career time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's not the right time. She's not even in New York. She's moving back to New York or she's mm. coming back. It was just like it would it didn't make any sense to me to message her. And it wasn't that I wasn't interested and it wasn't that I didn't think she was attractive, of course. Was it because you now had her sister watching the relationship? The and that you felt a responsibility to someone that you knew from your past. Because I, I do believe a lot of men steer away from situations where pain is a probability. I think you, your difficulty where I cannot amount to the thing that would be expected me to amount to. Because if mm. I was in your position, I, I, I call it the aunt theory. If you have an aunt watching you, 
you act differently than right. if no one's watching you at all. Oh, this, if yeah. my aunt introduced me to a woman, I have to be good to my aunt as well as the woman. Your aunt Not Ghost to, is on that date with you. Right, that's right. Yeah. And, and, and if I acted maybe the way I could act on a dating app where it's like the aunt would be like, how'd it go with Stacy? I fixed you up. And I was like, oh, well, we went out and then I ghosted the next day and I didn't call her. My aunt would be like, "What? You, right. you, you didn't call. Why don't you call her and tell her you can't go out again? You know, you act a little sure. differently. A little accountability. There's accountability. We're a so, community. So with you, where it's someone from your past, mm -hmm. if you go knock at that door, you know it's not just a cold call. Yes, it wasn't. Oh, you. Sh you she didn't say you should hook up with my sister-in-law. Right. It was like you should marry my sister-in-law. Right. So like you're absolutely right. I think the the idea of like, oh well, like this. If I do this, it's not a casual thing. Right. It's like right. go on a real date. And so when we matched eight months later, I had this new confidence where I was like, oh, like this person I really like and respect, like already tried to set us up. Um, and then when we did match and we started talking, she was like, she told me, she told you you wanted to be her brother-in-law. Like that's wild. Like right. that's so much. She but, had no idea. But I would also say you knew the, con now when you went into that, mm -hmm. You knew you were going down consequence road. Absolutely. And you did that knowingly. And and I would say you match on that app. You didn't think of like, and, and I, this is why I want, you know, my, my goal with this conversation is to say, nobody's that stupid. Nobody's right. dumber than you. We all went to the same public schools, took the same SATs. Right. Like, mm -hmm. like the idea that this person feels different than you that needs a spreadsheet, right. a flow chart, you know, is just not. It's just not ri right. It's just not, it's, it's incorrect. And it's actually like, I, I do think men are given this like beautiful um, allowance of how, the belief that we have no emotional intelligence whatsoever. Right. Mm. And when you do that, you're going to end up sitting around waiting for someone that's never going to come. Like, right. I, cause I, I know <clears throat> the same thing happens on a dating app. When you get to the point of chit chat and then it's like, okay. It's date time. It's time to ask on a date. You reevaluate. Do I want to do the more serious thing? Right. You know, like you know, right? The same you get to the same decision. It's a different math, but the same thought process is going on. Before you when you matched on hinge, it meant nothing. Oh, but then you had the confidence. And then you go, okay. Do I have the time? Do I have the energy? Do I have the ability to deal with my you know future sister in law, so to speak? Sure. Sure. Like, I, I think that is underrated in dating. Do you do phone call first? Because Some people do. Me. Some people do FaceTime, yeah. I think it was wild for me to go from text, never hearing this person's voice, mm. to now you just on a date with someone who's like, ha da 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 You're like, what? <laughs> and you had a pay. And I'm like, and I'm like why, why do you speak like that? You're weird. <laughs> Your brain is... Boring. Why are you going out with aliens? I know. And the voice, it seemed a little Asian. That literally, I didn't mean for it to. That, that happened to me. What? Where I The last date I went on before I met this person, as we were matching, and it's like a Friday night, and we're having like nice banner. She's like, I'm a physician. I was like, cool, a doctor. Yeah. And like, there was a part of me that was like, oh, this person is texting me like a lot for someone who's like, I'm out with my friends. At one point, I was like, are you having fun? Because like, you're texting me a lot. Right. And she's like, yeah, I'm having so much fun. This is the best. She's like, do you want to have a drink? I was like, sure. So I went from Astoria to the East Village and she was like wasted. I was like, oh. I should have called this person. Oh. This was a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah. We're in a wine bar. Right. I don't drink at all. You like, get on the phone. They're like, hey. You're like, oh, yeah. everything's come together. I, I fell for the trap of she's a physician. Her. Yeah, That's she went to so much thing. graduate school. Yeah. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> Listen, uh, so here's the flowchart video. Let's go to it. And on online dating, so I made this beautiful flowchart to help men ask women out online. Let's start at the top. We match with a new woman. I mean, on press pause app. for two seconds. Who that comment to the right is so long. <laughs> that person, I'm looking to the comment. It says, uh, "I dig your shit." <laughs> <laughs> is that from a man? Right. This is 1776. Old. Guy. No, but this video, this video is actually bait for the worst type of men. Yeah. Yeah. Because this guy is gonna like go into his. Look at he wrote a literal dissertation. He hasn't written that much since high school. Right. <laughs> and, and you're like, dude, like it's either you know this is clearly made by a person who has never had to date a human female. I will prove it to you. Make a make a male profile on a dating app, Bumble, Tinder, whatever. Use pictures of a man that you would consider dating, above average looking, and try to set up dates with a woman who are as attractive as you. 
They don't have to be a celebrity supermodel. You are a female and you would know what women are looking for. So you know how they want to be treated. Not to mention that you also have this flow chart. So this experiment should be an amazing uh, opportunity for you to show all of us stupid men how this is done. <laughs> Let's see how many dates you can get. See, this is this is yeah. an angry guy. Right. He's missing the point. Right. He's basically saying, I don't go on dates because no one will date me. Mm. And she's oh. not even, and it's sad. You know, she hurt. she's not saying that. She's, she's saying, I'm matching with guys. She's talking to a totally different group of men right. yeah. than this guy is trying to defend. This guy is basically like, I'm on the apps and I'm not getting dates. And I know, and I, you know, you try being me. And it's yeah. like, dude, you've missed the point. Yeah. She is talking about men she is attracted to, who she has already matched with, who she has spoken to, who are diddle-dallying, yeah. dilly-dallying, all around because they don't want to go on a date. They have other things going on. They are doing better than this man who is commenting right here. Right. This flow chart isn't for people. Also, it's not for people like me. <coughs> I can get a I can get a smile from a girl at a mm. red light. Mm. Okay. That's how quick. Like my dad. <laughs> my dad brings people into conversations that were like we're just sitting there and he's like, you know what I'm talking about to the lady next to us. I'm right. like, how did you bring her in? Right. That's not for those but super it, outgoing. But that's or the super. It's it's funny be, because you're right because these apps were made for people who couldn't get out of the house. Right. They were made to be a crutch for someone who needed the crutch. Now that people who don't need the crutch are on the apps, now the years and years, people who do have the ability to pull women into conversation, they go, I've pulled a few women in. Right. Let's see which one, you know, wants the lowest stakes. Right. Mm. And and now this person is in that group going, I guess he doesn't know how to ask women out. <laughs> And it's like, we're laughing at it because we're like, that's not the case. You know, so it, it is funny to see. It's a mess. It's a total mess. Yeah. That guy's paid for some roses on Hinge and it's right. not going well. You can <laughs> right. tell. You can feel it. Right. So let's. Sorry, let's, Greg. That's a premium feature. I right. said that. I just went, well, I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that means, but God bless. So let's keep going with the flow chart because she'll explain it. You get to a point where you're going to ask yourself, do you want to meet this woman in person? If no, go back to the top and match with a new woman. If yes, inquire with her regarding what part of town she lives in and her availability. Does she reply with needed info? If no, rephrase question with direct intention included. Example, I would love to take you to dinner sometime this weekend. If you're interested, I'd love to know what part of town you're by and when you're available so I can plan. Yeah, then that's, every guy knows to, that. Does she reply? There, there is no, they, they, they <laughs> are knowingly not doing that, <laughs> is my point. That's not, it's not, it's not a matter of, like the idea that someone's going, oh, ask them what part of town they're in. <laughs> And I'm not trying to like shit on her thing. I guess I am, but I, I. You tried to have her on. You're. Fine. I tried to have her on. I, I, and I'm not shitting on it as much as I'm letting people know this isn't your problem. Right. You are wrestling. You are dealing with a problem that's not a problem. The problem is you're talking to someone who doesn't want to ask you on a yeah. date. Yeah. And they want, and they're attracted to you. Mm. So that's a difficult thing. Right. I'm attracted to you. I don't want to go on a date with you. I got other shit going on. <laughs> so I'll keep talking to you until maybe I'm convinced to go on the date. Maybe when the schedule frees up. Maybe when you ask for something below a date that you want. Mm, that's the. What's below a date? Hey, meet up, you know, and drinks. And it's now we're in a more sexual place than we mm. were had there been a date. And it's like. Come with me to pick up my kids from daycare. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next segment. We 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 had so much going on. We're going to Patreon. This is it. We're, we, in, the we're in the Patreon. Mm. If you want to join us, uh, we are going to be doing luxury lounges in the Patreon. We have a bunch to go and complain with you. Uh, all user that. generated. We got a bunch of luxury lounges. If you want to hear some luxury lounge, sign up for Patreon. Five bucks a month gets you uh, extra, the end of every episode of this podcast. Also, it's on video. You can watch the video. Also, I do coffee with J Train. I just did one from my brother's wedding. I've probably done another one by the time this came out. Coffee with J Train. I tell stories from the week. Um, and again, you can hear my best man speech story. I gave the best man speech at my brother's wedding. We should compare. I would love to. Well, that would oh, be a good episode. Mine. You were at? I was at. You were at the best man speech where I gave I, Well, you gave a great best man speech. <laughs> 
It was you getting angry that you weren't the best man, and then you were. I mean, well, Anthony didn't tell me I was the best man until 20 minutes. But that's crazy. You were always the best man. I was angry for months. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was like, ah, oh, we're not doing that Do you have thing. it on video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do uh, let's uh, can you send it send it to us? We'll play it in the Patreon. All right, I've got to get it from Anthony. But yeah. Oh, you don't have it? I mean, I don't know if I have available. I'll have to look. I don't. I'm, I'm too scared to. Look I'm not going to make promises I can't keep. We're not going <laughs> to. We're going to do luxury lounge on the. Join us in. Join us in the Patreon. Patreon.com/slash Jared Fried. Okay. Uh, 